Hi, I'm Andre. I'm here with Fun Robotics Network, and I'm here today with Team uh, Two One Zero Two Eight, the Eagles. And today we'll talk about their blazingly fast robot, how compact they did uh, the robot this season, and also uh, what's uh, their approach of the season uh, this year. I'm here today with uh, Andre and Matei, and they'll show uh, show us why this robot won uh, today's league. Meet. This video on Fun is brought to you by viewers like you, and also in partnership with the following. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Okay, guys, so could you talk me uh, to, through how, uh, why did you uh, uh, choose to do a robot like this small? And also, what was your process behind this robot? How did you think about it? Yeah, so uh, about the robot, we made it very simple. Uh, at the beginning of the season, we thought that there were two ways to approach the season, a spin dexter with a sorting mechanism and uh, just a simple intake to outtake mechanism. Uh, after reviewing the potential scores from both methods, uh, revealed that the spin dexter method was not uh, uh, really worth it uh, with the, how much weight it adds to the robot and how big it is. So we decided to make it simple, just an intake going straight to the shooter. And also, uh, could you talk me about your chassis? I've heard it's, uh, you, you are very proud of it. Why did you choose to use uh, uh, helical gears or uh, just gears uh, and not belts or other things? So about the chassis, uh, we had the idea during the off season to have uh, uh, 3D printed gears on the wheels themselves and uh, using only bare motors uh, with a small gear on them. Basically, this removes the weight of the gearbox. So in total, we uh, shave off about one kilogram of the total robot's weight. Also, the gearing is uh, slightly faster and with the reduced weight, uh, uh, the battery is consumed very fast. Very, very nice. And also, could you, uh, could you tell me why you chose to do a uh, uh, wheels intake and not like a noodles or other types of mechanisms for the intake? And why this? So at the beginning of the season, we made tests and uh, we um, uh, realized that the Gecko wheels are very fast for intaking, uh, especially the small ones, because they don't take uh, a lot of space and uh, they work very fast. And how fast is your transfer? I, 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 uh, I saw on the field that uh, you were basically shooting every time. Uh, whoa. How, how did you guys manage to do that very, very fast? So for uh, transferring the uh, artifacts from the intake to the shooter, we basically have one single servo that uh, either blocks all uh, the uh, artifacts from going to the shooter or becomes a ramp. Once it becomes a ramp, the intake pushes all the artifacts into the shooter one after one, and uh, uh, they all go very fast into the goal. And also, so could you uh, about your uh, shooting mechanism? I, I I've talked to you guys, and I uh, understand you use a flywheel. What's the difference between a flywheel and no flywheel? Let's say. At the beginning of the season, we made uh, a few tests of uh, shooters with different wheels and uh, we saw that the uh, wheels with the highest moment of inertia were basically the ones that retained the most speed during shooting. Uh, basically, we made the decision to have uh, a flywheel. In total, it's about 900 grams of uh, weight on the axle and uh, the wheel isn't slowing down uh, very much uh, shooting the artifacts and we can shoot one after another uh, very fast without losing uh, power. Uh, and also, could you tell me how, why did you choose to use the, the shooting rampers to make it so small? Like, I, I've seen a lot of teams make their shooter very big. Or, or actually, why did you choose to not use a t turret for uh, the shooter as well? So, uh, we didn't use a turret because uh, at the beginning of the season for the league meets, we decided to have a robot that is designed fast and doesn't have many points that can break because uh, many of the points in the beginning of the season are lost due to mechanical problems, electrical problems, so we decided to have it uh, very simple. Uh, a few additions we made during the league meets, uh, such as an adjustable angle for shooting, and uh, we made it really simple in order to not have uh, problems during the matches. Oh, I see, I see. And also, uh, you said you wanted for the league meet, so I guess you'll do a rebuild for the regionals or something? Uh, we plan on having a rebuild, uh, adding uh, more complex mechanisms, but uh, in general, we still won't have the same idea to keep it really simple so it can upgrade. 
Uh, also, could you tell me about how you decided to use the programming for the this robot? Like, I seen your autonomous is very, very impressive. I think it was one of the uh, highest ones, like 12 or 15 uh, artifacts, right? And also, uh, what, what sensors do you use for every part of the, your robot? So, in autonomous, you have really only the odometry for uh, sensing. Uh, basically, you have a custom algorithm for movement that. Uh, uh, removes all the wait time so we can shave off every last second so we can uh, shoot the most. Uh, also, the adjustable angle for shooting allowed us to pull up the shooter very fast at the beginning and not have to have a big shooting speed and uh, also uh, to shoot from very close so we don't have to travel a lot of uh, distance. Thanks guys, this was a very, very interesting interview. I hope teams can learn more and uh, optimize their robots like you did this season or so far this season. Uh, I'm, I am Andre, I'm reporting for Fun, uh, uh, Fun Robotics Network at uh, uh, Defrost Lake Mitin Yash. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu first.